In this video, I will show you how to create config map and secret volumes and how to use them in parts. I'm going to give you some real life use cases and show you the syntax of using volumes in a part configuration. Think of applications that take configuration files as parameter when they start, like Prometheus, Elasticsearch, Mosquito, Message Broker, uh, Nginx, or your own JavaScript or Java application that has properties files or applications that need a configuration file with sensitive data. Like if you have an application with 10 external services that it communicates with, which are all secured. So you have a passwords properties file with all these credentials, or maybe an application needs a client certificate file to communicate with an internal secured service. Now, how do you configure that or pass these files to the Kubernetes pods? And these are actually scenarios that I have used very often when setting up Kubernetes uh, clusters, because many services that you deploy in Kubernetes will have configuration files. So it's important to know these concepts. If you have seen my other video about Kubernetes main components, including config map and secret, you know, they are used for external configuration of individual values like this. Um, and you can check out that video right here. So this is a MongoDB config map that has one key value pair, which is database host. And then you have secret for MongoDB as well with username and password key value pairs. Now note, these are individual values. And the way we use that in the pod configuration was like this. So this is a container where Mongo express would start. And the Mongo Express can reference these values, these individual key value pairs like this. So these individual values are used as values for the environmental variables that configure Mongo Express application in this case. So you have the environmental variable and we take the value of that from the secret, referencing the name of the secret and the key inside the secret in the same way we use the config map. So this is one specific use case of config maps and secrets. However, these are individual values and not files that application in the pod container can read. So with config map and secret, you can create individual key value pairs, but you can also create files that can be mounted into the pod and then into the container. So that application in that container can access it. And you can do that like this. So we have the same config map component. And instead of defining here key value pairs, we define the name of that file. This is going to be mosquito.conf. And these are going to be the contents of that file. Note this pipe syntax right here. So this is whatever is going to be inside that file. And the same way we can create secret files like this. So we have the same secret kind, and this is going to be the file name, which is going to call it secret.file. It could be a passwords file, whatever. And this is going to be a value or secret, the contents of that file base 64 encoded, because this is how you set the value in the secret component. And another use case, as I mentioned, is sometimes you need client certificates for your services so that they can communicate with other secured services. And this way you can create a secret component where let's say you define a CA certificate or a client certificate file. And here you just paste in the base 64 encoded contents of that certificate file. So I'm going to show you all this now in practice. And for this demo, I'm going to use Mosquito, which is a message broker. And Mosquito, like many other services, has a configuration file where you can configure different stuff like what ports to open, whether to secure it or not. Mosquito also takes a passwords file where you can configure all the authentication, or you can also override the certificate files of Mosquito. And so we're going to create a config file and a secret file for mosquito pod, right? So we're going to use these two files and mount them into mosquito pod. But to see that first, let's actually create mosquito without any volumes. So no files mounted inside it. It's just a default 
mosquito container that starts without any persistence. So I'm going to head over to Minikube. I have a Minikube cluster set up. Um, if you want to know how to set up Minikube cluster, I have a separate video about that, so you can check that out. So I have all the configuration files already prepared for me here so that I can use them. And you can access all these configuration files in the Git repository that I will link in the description. kubectl apply mosquito without volumes. And I'm going to have my pod. And now let's actually enter the container or get the terminal. And let's see its file system. So I'm going to ls. And here I see a mosquito, a pre-configured mosquito directory. Let's actually go inside and see what is there. And there is a config folder data and log folder. So this is all by default. So this is already configured in the image. I'm using an Eclipse Mosquito image. This is already pre-configured there. And if I go into the config directory, I see a mosquito.conf file. And by default, this comes with just uh, commented out contents of its attributes and description. So basically, there is just description of a bunch of defaults here. Nothing is really uh, set. So now we saw the default structure. Let's actually go out and I'm going to delete that. Using the same file. So, and now we just saw how the default configuration in Mosquito looks like. And we are going to now overwrite that mosquito conf file using the config map by mounting it into the container. So I'm going to clear that. And one thing to note here is that obviously before you can use or reference config map and secret inside your pod, you have to create them. So they have to be in the cluster when the pod starts. Um, otherwise, you will get errors that the config map or secret component can't be found. So let's actually go ahead and create these two. And secret. And we can actually check these are components like this. Get secret and kubectl get config map will give you mosquito config file and I have another one in the cluster. Okay so now we have those two files ready or resources ready in the cluster. Now we have to go back and create a mosquito deployment that uses these two files, right? So this is a mosquito deployment, which is exactly the same as this one here. The same image, the same configuration, uh, same port. So what we're going to do here is add volumes to this configuration. And the way to do that is using volumes attribute at the containers level. So remember, this is a specification of the pod and Inside the pod specification, we define volumes. And here we list all the volumes that we want to mount into that pod. And we just give it names like, let's call this mosquito config. And this is the type of volume that you want to mount into that pod. Um, if you want to see the complete overview of volumes and different types of them, you can check out my other video where I explain the volume components. So here we're mounting config map volume type. So I'm going to write config map. And the name of that config map is this one right here. And that's it. We mounted file that is config map created into the pod. And now let's do the same for the secret. Let's call it mosquito secret. And the attribute for secret, this is again the volume type secret, and the attribute is secret name. 
and this is the name and this is basically just some random secret file that we are creating just for the demonstration. Okay, so now I have both volume types mounted into the pod. The next step is that now you have to mount those volumes inside the container because the application is actually running inside the container. So if we want the application to use that, we have to mount whatever's available here inside the container. And the way to do that is inside each individual container. So you may have a list of containers here. So you have to do that for each individual container. So we have just one here and inside that I'm going to create volume mounts attribute with camel case like this. And here again, I'm going to list all the volumes that I want to mount from pod to container. Now, obviously you can't mount into the container anything that you don't have available inside the pod. So here I'm going to again say name and this name here is going to be the name that we defined here. So it's going to be mosquito conf and the second attribute is mount path. In the beginning, I showed you the file system of mosquito container and we saw there was a mosquito directory with config in it. So mount path references the path in the file system inside the container where we want this file to end up. So we saw that mosquito conf is inside the slash mosquito slash config and we want to override that. So that's going to be the mount path and we're going to do the same for the secret. So I'm going to copy that. So this is the name and mount path mosquito. And let's actually create a secret folder inside, which doesn't exist yet. And then this file, the secret dot file is going to be available inside that directory in the container. And that's it. You can also add additional attributes here. For example, one um, very common case is that, for example, when you're mounting a client certificate, which is maybe used in many different uh, applications, you may want to add a read only attribute to that, which makes sense because you don't want the applications to modify those certificate files. They're just there for uh, reading. So you can add read only true attribute to that. Same could be done for configuration files that are not meant to be changed by the application. So let's add that attribute there. And this is it. So we are done mounting the configuration file created using config map component and the secret file, which we just created a random one inside the pod and inside the container application. And obviously the path uh, value depends on the application. For example, if you have Elasticsearch, uh, it has a default config location at, uh, I believe, uh, slash etc slash Elasticsearch. So the config location will be different for Nginx, it's etc Nginx, etc. Same with secret. For example, if you have your own application that expects passwords file at a specific location, then you want to mount that secret into that specific location so that the application can find it. This concept here of first mounting the volumes in the pod and then mounting into the container basically um, is useful if you have multiple containers, you can decide uh, which container gets access to which volumes that pod has available. So you can actually decide to give one container one volume access to one storage or not give the container access to a certain uh, storage. Okay, so the mosquito deployment file is ready. So let's actually create that. So I'm going to head back to the mini cube and let's apply mosquito. So let's actually get in the container again. So exec. So bash is not available, so we're going to go with sh. And here, let's go inside the mosquito again. And first, we'll see the secret 
directory that wasn't here before. Let's go inside. And here we have the secret dot file that we created with base64 encoded content. And let's see what's in there. And there is a, a plain text contents of that file, which says super secret, nobody should see. Okay, and now let's go back to Mosquito and config folder. And here previously was this default configuration file that we overrode. If I display that, these are the contents of the new configuration file that we mounted that Mosquito now uses. So to summarize, what we saw in this video is config map and secret components in Kubernetes are used both to create individual key pair values that you can use as values of environmental variables, for example, in your pods configuration, or you can create files from them that you can then pass in as a configuration file to your application, which as I mentioned is a use case that actually happens very frequently because a lot of services take some kind of external configuration file or multiple configuration files. And the second point is that config map and secret are volume types, which people don't realize right at the beginning because they don't look like the typical volumes created with volume, uh, persistent volume component, but they're local uh, volume types in Kubernetes. So that's it for this video. I'm going to create more content on how to use individual volume types like local volumes and remote volumes or cloud storage volumes for different use cases. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.